In this segment, we will look at another way of solving systems of equations, and this time we we'll use substitution. So the idea behind substitution is that we will choose either an x or a y to get by itself. It can be either letter, it can be an either equation. We just want to look for a letter that does not have a number in front of it. That will make things easier for us. We'll get that letter by itself. And then we'll replace that expression into the other equation in place of that letter. And we'll put that in parentheses. We'll solve for the letter that's left. And we'll replace this back into either beginning equation to find the last letter. We will always write our answers as a point x comma y, just like we did in the last section. If you solve and both variables cancel out, you need to see if you have a true statement. If you do, like 0 equals 0, it has infinitely many solutions. This is our, this is our same line situation from the last chapter. The lines are on top of each other. If you do not have a true statement, like 0 equals 3, then there's no solution. This is like our parallel lines in the last section. So let's walk through that a little bit. So first of all, we want to choose a letter to get by itself. In this situation, it's already done for us. So we're just going to use that y. That y now says it's equal to 4x plus 1. So in place of y in the other equation, we'll put in 4x plus 1. So we have 2 parenthesis 4x plus 1 parenthesis minus 4x equals 14. So the idea is that now we've replaced this, substituted it into the other equation, which allows us to have an equation with only x's. We'll distribute And we'll combine like terms, add 2 to both sides, and divide by 4, and we find out x is 4. Now we're going to use that back up in either of the beginning two, situ two equations. It doesn't matter which one, we just need to replace x with 4. So I'm going to go back to the very first equation. And in place of x, I'm going to put our 4 because we did the work to find out that's what x was. So now I have y is equal to 16 plus 1 and y is equal to 17. So this gives us the answer 4, 17. Always x first, x comma y. If you put this into the other equation, you'll also get a true statement. We would now have 2 times 17 minus 4 times 4. 2 times 17 is 38 minus 16, and that equals 14. It should work in both equations. It's a double check. So let's look at this system. So here we don't have something already by itself. So we look at both equations and we look for something that does not have a number in front of it. And that's right here. There's no number in front of that y. So we're going to get y by itself in that equation. So I'll start off by writing that 4x plus y down here. I'm going to add 4x to both sides. And that gives me y equals 4x plus 8. So now I have this y by itself, and I know it equals to 4x plus 8. So now I have to go to my other equation. I used the bottom equation first, and so now I have to use the top equation. And in place of y, I'm going to put that 4x plus 8. So I'll have 6x plus 4, parenthesis, 4x plus 8, parenthesis, equals 10. And I'll solve this, so I'll distribute here first. I'll combine like terms, so I have 22x plus 32 equals 10. 
subtract 32 from both sides. So I get 22x equals negative 22. Divide by 22. And I get x is equal to negative 1. So that's the x part of my equation. So now that I know that, I need to go back to either beginning equation. It doesn't matter which because I've used them both already once. I need to put x in as negative 1. So to me it looks a little bit like this bottom equation could be easier or simpler. It doesn't matter. Um, whatever you think looks right. So I'm going to put it right there in place of that x. So I'd have negative 4 times negative 1 plus y equals 8. So negative 4 times negative 1 is 4 plus y equals 8. Subtract 4 and I get y equals 4. So then I can write my point. My answer is negative 1, 4. And if I substitute that back into both equations, it should work in both spots. Let's look at one more example. So here we have y by itself in two places. So we're going to use this and we'll put it in place of this other y. That gives us 5x plus 6 equals negative 1 half x plus 19 fifths. So we're going to solve this. It's an equation with all x's in it. We'll add 1 half x to both sides. You can do that in your calculator. You would get 11 halves x plus 6 equals 19 fifths. Then we'll subtract 6 from both sides. So we can do that in our calculator too. We can do 19 fraction 5 minus 6 and we get a negative 11 fifths. And then we need to divide both sides by 11 halves. And you can do that in your calculator as well. You can do negative 11 fraction 5 divided by 11 fraction 2 and we get negative 2 fifths. So now we're going to go back and we're going to plug that in to either equation. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to put this in for x. Now to me it looks like that first equation that doesn't have other fractions in it might be easier. So I'm going to put it in there. So I write y equals 5 and then I have a negative 2 fifths and then plus 6. So you can do that multiplication in your calculator. 5 times a negative 2 fifths is a negative 2 plus 6 and that gives us 4. So we'll write our answer as a point, negative two-fifths-four.